React concepts like Components, JSX, fragments, props, elements, keys, rendering, states, event handlers, controlled components, hooks, effects, virtual DOM, refs, context, portals, suspense, and error boundaries may seem overwhelming, but you're going to know every React concept by the end of this video, so let's break them down, starting right from the basics with components. Components are the fundamental building blocks in a React app. Think of them as Lego bricks that you can stack and reuse effortlessly. They help us construct visible elements such as loading profile pages, image galleries, and search bars. Combine enough of these and you can make Facebook. In React, components are essentially JavaScript functions that generate markup, but instead of regular HTML markup, React components use something called JSX which is essentially JavaScript pretending to be HTML. JSX simplifies UI creation significantly compared to the traditional create element function. When working with JSX, attribute names are written in camel case instead of the conventional HTML format. This allows us to put dynamic JavaScript values directly into JSX using curly braces. If you need to display data dynamically, then just wrap it in the curly braces. Real quick, if your standards are being met, give the video a like to let YouTube know that it should recommend it to others as well. In React, each component is restricted to returning a single parent element, which can be a bit tricky at times. But never fear, React fragments are here. These fragments are an empty component that doesn't need any additional wrapper elements. Now, let's discuss the transmission of data between components. We utilize props, or properties, to convey data from one component to another. This enhances the flexibility and reusability of our components. But here's what's interesting. Props aren't just for the basic things. You can also pass other parts of your app as props using the children prop. This helps make your app more complex and gives it the ability to do more interesting things. Composition is all about organizing React's components optimally. The children prop plays a significant role here especially when making layout components to ensure consistent styling across child elements. And what about keys? These serve as unique identifiers, helping React distinguish between different components, which is especially useful when handling lists. You'll know when you need to use keys when you get this error in your app. Now let's dive into rendering, which is the process where React transforms our code into actual UI elements. This happens with the assistance of the virtual DOM, a lightweight counterpart of the real DOM that facilitates fast and easy updates. But how do we manage user interactions? That's where event handling comes into play, enabling us to respond to user actions such as clicks, mouse movements, and key presses. If you're enjoying this so far, don't forget to subscribe. Doing so will allow me to make more videos just like this. To govern the dynamic behavior of our React apps, we turn to state. Unlike conventional JavaScript variables, state captures snapshots of our app's data at any given moment, ensuring predictable behavior. Controlled components, driven by state values, offer a dependable means of managing user input, ensuring that the component's behavior remains synchronized with the underlying state. This brings us to hooks, which are the power tools of React. From managing state with useState to interacting with external systems via useEffect, hooks revolutionize the way we handle logic within functional components. In the pursuit of simplicity, React components aim to produce the same output for a given input. Strict mode helps us detect potential issues during development. But what if we need to extend beyond our React app? Enter effects, which empower us to interact interact with the outside world, whether that's making HTTP requests or interfacing with browser APIs. Sometimes, we need to access the DOM directly. Refs provide a convenient means of referencing DOM elements, which is useful for things like focusing inputs. Now let's explore context, a powerful tool for passing data through our component tree without the need for manual prop drilling. Context facilitates easy access to data at any level, simplifying data management across nested components. Portals are similar to context, but for components. They allow us to render components outside their parents' DOM hierarchy, which is perfect for things like modals or tooltips. Suspense adds a touch of sophistication to handling asynchronous operations, allowing us to manage loading states and lazy components seamlessly. And finally, error boundaries act as the guardians of our app stability, shielding it from crashing and providing fallback UIs in case of errors. So if you're ready to go beyond the definitions, I have a video covering every React hook in detail with examples that you should watch next.